Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar of the WordPress community and podcast connecting people with the products, lessons, and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my co-host and good buddy, Matt Siebert from Paria Strategic Design. How's it going today, Matt? It's going well. Um, I'm in my new house. Uh, I've got this comforter in the background here. Um, hopefully that helps with the uh, empty room echo noise. But yeah, no, things are going well. It's snowing outside, but uh, you know, what are you going to do? It's New England. Well, luckily us here in Texas, we don't have to worry about snowstorms. Although it was cold enough to snow this morning, it is not going to snow. So I'm safe from that. Uh, Today, we are joined by Nathan Alote from NathanAlote.com and Freelance Jumpstart Podcast and Freelance Jumpstart TV. We actually met Nathan at WordCamp BFW. He gave a talk. And uh, we went up to him afterwards and introduced ourselves and said, hey, we got to get you on the show. So today is that day we're going to have Nathan on the show. Uh, And we're all we're going to talk about why I think all of us kind of agree that freelancer is a four letter word. So good morning, Nathan. How are you doing this morning, man? Doing well, doing well. Thank you all for having me. I am very proud of you, Kyle. Kyle said my last name the right way. So I give you some (laughs) claps and kudos. Guess Uh, what? I was going to ask you this morning, but I went to your website and to the about page and you had spelled it out phonetically. Ah, I did. Yeah, I did. I did my homework. Nice. So, yeah, no, thank you for that. Yeah. As you mentioned, we met at uh, WordCamp. Uh, You all had an awesome talk as well. So uh, I I do want to say that. But yeah, you know, definitely there was a commonality there. That was a great word camp, by the way, I think. Yeah, that was my, yeah. First, that was my first time at uh, word camp DFW. But regardless, yeah, it was a great time and I'm happy to be here on the podcast. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited to have you. So for, for those of you, I know you joined the group not too long after we had word camp DFW and we started connecting. But for those of you, uh, uh, those of the those of those people, I can't talk the people out there who don't know you yet. Why don't you give us a little bit of introduction to who you are, what you do, where they can find you? I know you got a ton of awesome content online that I've already been digging into. So tell us all a little bit about that. Yeah. So uh, let me give you, I guess, a brief origin story, as you mentioned, for those who might not know who I am. So, so you me- could say it. Yeah. You're like so, a professional. <laughs> as I mentioned, Nathan, Nathan Alote. Um, so, uh, just a little bit of background of that. Somebody may think, oh, that, that name, what does that mean? Is it a low say like the, you know, Tex-Mex corn or something? No. Um, <laughs> uh, my parents are actually from Ghana, West Africa. They came over here to go to college and then they had my brother and had me. And, um, that was in Illinois. We moved to Texas when I was five. And, you know, ever since then, you know, growing up in Texas, uh, I think I said I wanted to be a doctor when I was younger growing up. And then I was like, I don't want to go to school for 50 years. Right. So, uh, but somewhere along the line, I fell in love with technology. I liked building things, trying new things, uh, accidentally electrocuted myself playing around with electronics. So uh, that kind of turned itself into me wanting to do electrical engineering. So I went to college, I went to Baylor University, graduated uh, during a recession. Haha. <laughs> so a great time to graduate. And Uh, When I graduated during the session, I was just looking around for different things. And I was also playing around with web design uh, because it just looked cool. But, you know, it was a little rough to kind of learn how to do it. And, uh, yeah, a friend was like, hey, you're trying to learn how to do web design. Why don't you work at this web hosting company? They're hiring. Right. Now, uh, I don't know, you know, the name of the web hosting company. I'm kind of forgetting it. Uh, Something to do with like alligators. I don't really remember. I got you. But I uh, I worked at a web hosting company. And yeah, I learned a lot there. And that was my introduction to WordPress. So uh, when I looked at different tools, I felt like WordPress was one of the better things to learn how to do, uh, at least for me, web design and just put things together and easily add on added functionality. And that just blossomed. I learned more about web design, uh, graphic design, and I started freelancing and started my own business. And then I started sharing everything that I learned which gave birth to my website, podcast, and all the other stuff I'm doing today. Yes, for sure. And uh, after I saw your talk, I went on, went on to your website and started digging through a bunch of these podcast episodes. Every now and then you you find somebody new online, right? And they have a this whole treasure trove of content and it, it sends you down a path. You're able, to, uh, you're able to dig into a whole bunch of content. So I've been excited to go through and what you have. Uh, on your website. One thing I really, I'll, I'll give you props for here. I love your, I love your episodes where you're just driving around in your car talking. I don't know. There's something oh, like wow. soothing about you just driving around talking about web stuff. I just really dig it. 
No, cool. And what uh, Kyle's alluding to is, uh, I just realized I was, you know, kind of busy, you know, juggling uh, client work and side projects and all these other stuff that I do. I said, I need, man, I spent a lot of time in the car, uh, you know. Especially in, in Houston. Yeah. So in Houston, Texas, uh, if you want to drive maybe 18 miles in the morning, it might take you an hour. Uh, yeah. it just It's sad. I could probably jog and beat myself anyway, whatever. <laughs> but that's sad. Now I think about that, saying it out loud. But yeah, I just spent a lot of time in the car and I said, why, how can I be productive? So I bought a GoPro camera and said, I will answer questions I find online that people ask me, or I just see repetitively asked online about certain things from web design or business or, you know, client management, whatever it might be. And I just answer those questions while driving in the car, wherever I'm going. So um, yeah, it's just a good way to make content and, you know, be productive. Had to master not being distracted though. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. So I really just focus on the road and it, it's safe. It's safe. Uh, no, it, it looks like you're doing fine. You're not, you're not looking straight into the camera the whole time. So you're good, yeah. but I do, I do like those episodes, but one, uh, and why we're kind of here chatting today, one podcast episode you had really stuck, stuck out to me. And it's where you were talking about the term freelancer. So I've always been kind of, uh, adverse to using the term freelancer to describe myself. Um, we actually did a episode with Jim Galliano a while back where we kind of broke down the difference between freelancer agency and consultant and kind of what those differences really mean. Um, but you in your podcast had some really great examples of kind of what that means in the real world, some, uh, some ways to use it and some ways to not use it. So I definitely thought we should get you on here and kind of talk about that. So I guess the first question I want to ask you is, what does the term freelancer mean to you? Well, the way I would define a freelancer, and, and there's a formal definition, but the way I would define freelancer, at least in my own words, is uh, you're someone you, who is a professional and you're not tied to any one business or organization as an employee. So you may be in one business organization working with them and then a new job or gig comes up and then you go to another company and you help them so on and so forth. So you're not necessarily attached to any one company and you may go work for them on site, right? You may go work for them on site. So that's what I would say a general definition is. I know there's a formal definition as well, but that's what I would say when I hear freelance. I'm just thinking, oh, so you're not a test of company. You work with many people. Got it. Yeah. And I think there's some confusion there when people, when people look at like just the business to business model, you know, and, and that's kind of how I see my business. I, I, I own a business and I work with other businesses, so I'm not attached to their business. I'm not working for them. Uh, but I'm also, I don't feel like I'm a freelancer working for them because I'm working business to business relationship. No, definitely. You're right. Yeah. So, so one thing you talked about in your podcast is you gave some examples outside of the web design world of how somebody might use the term freelancer and why that might turn you off. So one of the examples you gave was a surgeon. So uh, even though we're going to be repetitive here and you've already done this on your podcast, why don't you tell us about that analogy? Yeah. So, you know, a freelancer and, you know, Matt already somewhat spoke to it, but, you know, when you hear freelancer, that technically might be the legal distinction or designation that you have for your business. So, or the category that you do even maybe for your taxes. So you, most people don't call themselves what their legal entity is for tax purposes. They just right. come up with a name, a catchy name that's branding. So as a creative professional, why would you call yourself that? You know, it doesn't, really give you a lot of control and then you're left to people's assumptions on what the word freelancer means and i gave an analogy so you know i just posed the question you know would you rather if you're having you know chest pains and heart issues would you want to see a renowned cardiovascular surgeon someone who specializes in doing things of the heart and uh, they do heart surgery would you want to go to a heart surgeon or cardiovascular surgeon or would you rather just go to a freelance surgeon yeah, that's when you hear choice. that, yeah, when you hear <laughs> that, you're like freelance surgeon. What does that even? Even though technically, right, doctors fly out to different hospitals and collaborate with different people. Yeah, I think say, they call that like a general surgeon a lot of times. You know, in that world too. Correct, or, or you say I want the best person, so you you know they may the best heart doctor might be in Germany. Come fly out and do surgery on me. So yeah, I mean they functionally they go different places and just perform surgery, but they don't call themselves 
a freelance surgeon, right? They give themselves a specialty, a designation, a distinction that gives a clue as to the level of professionalism. So even if it's a lawyer, right? Like, cause you know, life and death is serious. So you're like, ah, uh, you know, doctor, that's, that's too much. Okay, if it's a lawyer, a lot of times it's a hefty penalty you might pay legally or it's your freedom at stake. Do you wanna work with someone who, and if it's maybe it was something about uh, taxes, do you wanna work with a tax lawyer that specializes in taxes? Or do you wanna just work with a freelance lawyer? Hey, sometimes I do taxes. Sometimes I do, you know, uh, child labor law. Hey, you know, sometimes I do auto accidents. You know, hey, you know, you know, call me, you know, call me. You know, I'm a freelance lawyer. You, you wouldn't want to do that. And that distinction or that description I gave just made it a little bit more clear that you already function like that. You already think like that. So why would you call yourself a freelancer and be subject to whatever your client assumes about that title? Right. Yeah. And I think that puts it like perfectly, it's such a great analogy. I'm a, I love analogies anyways, but it's it's such a great analogy because it really makes you think about like those examples are so outlandish that like, no, I would never hire the freelance Mm. surgeon to do my heart surgery. Um, But a lot of people call themselves freelancers in this business uh, and don't see it the same, but I think there is some similarities there. And I think you are probably putting off some kind of vibe to people when you call yourself that, you know, you seem uh, unattached. You seem like, uh, you know, I don't know, to me, it, it feels a little bit more like you, you're, you're just kind of flying by the seat of your pants, you know? No, you're right. And, and that, that kind of gives way to, I guess I would say someone who is a creative professional really sitting down and thinking about what your title is. And, and let's be honest, that's a, a huge value, I believe, because normally when you work for a company, corporation, whomever, uh, they give you the title. And, you know, sometimes those titles come with, I, I guess I'll say power. And other times it's just, a, it's just a regular average title, right? You know, do they, if they call you a manager or not, that holds some type of weight. Do you have management experience? And you're like, oh, I've never had a title of a manager. So, right. so titles, you know, they give a clue and they have some type of value. But now that you are a, I guess I'll say functioning creative professional or freelancer, if you want to call it that, even though we're, we're going, getting away from that, why wouldn't you give yourself a valuable title? You finally have the control to give yourself a title, but you just call yourself freelancer. I think you're surrendering a little bit of value that you could have on the onset, at least when you introduce yourself to someone, because you say, yeah, I'm a digital marketing strategist. Good to meet you. Or do you want to say, yeah, good to meet you. I'm a freelancer. Oh, what do you do? Oh, freelance web design. You know. Oh, okay. do whatever somebody pays yeah, me for. Yeah, I mean, like depending <laughs> on the the type of client that's uh, that's reaching out to me. I mean, they've already gone through their project discovery form, so like I kind of know who they are, what they're looking for, and all of that stuff. And I mean, I'll change what I call myself depending on uh, the client that uh, that I reach out to. I mean as long as your brand messaging and everything online or, you know, in your print or wherever it is, is working for you and it's all cohesive, like you can, in those onboarding meetings, like you can call yourself whatever you feel like, really. (laughs) I mean, whatever is going to mix and match best with that particular client, that's, that's what you use. That's very smart and wise, I'd say. And I'll do that a lot of times. I'll just introduce myself as the business owner when I'm talking to another business owner because it kind of puts you on that equal footing with them. Uh, you know, they might treat you differently if they think you're the employee of the company, or or you know, just to to put yourself kind of at that equal footing. I think is important too. Um, so you do use the word freelancer yourself though, because your podcast is. Uh, got got the word freelance in it. So you did talk about that a little bit in your in your in your show and it being maybe okay to use that term when we're in company like this because um, you know we kind of understand what that means a little bit more than the general public might. So how do you how do you see that distinction? Yeah, so I believe you can call yourself a freelancer around you know other creatives or people who are similar to you if they really understand and know what it means because a lot of times, when you're working as a creative professional, you may have your own company, so you're a business owner, but at the same time, you might be a solopreneur, it might be just you. So you're a business owner, but you still, in a sense, function like a freelancer. So, you know, it's just you, and you work with a specific company to do work, and you're functioning like a freelancer. So that's okay in, in terms of describing how your business works, 
in a sense. And, you know, other people can get it, hear that. Oh, what do you do? Oh, okay, I got you. You know, you have a design studio, you freelance. Oh, I got it. You know, they, they understand. But, you know, I say don't say that to clients because, again, they, don't, they might not have that same level of understanding. And then they'll take that definition to a completely different place where it almost undervalues you, right? But, uh, yeah, and I also use it just because I know people freely use the term. So if you freely use the term and you find some of my content, great. But I'm going to steer you towards, you know, putting more value associated with uh, what your, the work, type of work that you do. Yeah. And I don't think that freelancer has always been a four letter word or, or you know, however you want to call it. Um, I think with the rise of sites like Fiverr and, uh, you know, freelancer and all of that, I think that, uh, you know, clients get in their head that, uh, the freelancer means cheap, dirty, and quick. And, uh, you know, I think that that is a, is a major issue as to why uh, freelancer is a, you know, quote, four letter word is that uh, people just kind of, you know, the definition of it has kind of changed over time because of these, uh, these quick, dirty, fast sites. You know what I mean? No, I would agree. Uh, well, this is a quick sidebar. Have, have all of us used those type of sites before? Yeah, I have. Okay. Okay. Good. What was the overall? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the overall feeling when you were when you were on it being hired? Oh, see, I, see, I haven't used it uh, to to solicit my services. I've bought things from those places, okay. but I haven't listed myself on there. But this is this is good. This is why I asked because I was on freelance. I think that was the first one I was on freelancer dot com. It starts to create an idea of this is what a freelancer is. This is someone who can quickly do work for me. And at least in my opinion, <laughs> when I was on it and when I uh, actually used it to hire people, this is someone that can quickly do a job for me and it shouldn't be that much money. Mm -hmm. the, at least that was my thought and my mentality. Hey, I need something done really quick. I'm kind of busy. Uh, maybe this person can do a WordPress install and setup for me. I already have some instructions written out. Hey, I need something done really quick. And even in my mind, I'm already thinking I don't want to spend over a certain amount. And then it's a, a bidding war based on price, no longer value, because just who's cheaper and who can get it done. And there's a place for that. There's yeah. a definite place for that. But that was my mentality when I was hiring work. And also I was disappointed when I was on the platform because I was fighting with people for jobs that didn't have the same level of expertise as me but the only barometer people had was who's cheaper. Right. So, you know, my overall Star reviews and price. There you go. So my yeah. overall experience with that was disappointing. But the reason I brought all that up and even asked that was, yeah, it feeds into that same word as well. Uh, freelancer. Oh, it shouldn't be that much. Yeah. At least that's where my mind went. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and the times I've used Fiverr before, it was because I didn't want to spend money to hire somebody like, legitimate to get the work done so it was just like hey, i could get this done for like five or ten bucks that's gonna be good yeah. enough and we can move on with today i literally never have to talk to them again or work with them again you know and that's certainly not what i want people to think when they call my phone number that is not the impression i want them to have at all <clears throat> well, no, I, awesome. no, Go ahead. no i have another question but you have yeah, a question. Yeah. no you have a question maybe you might ask it no go for it go for it i was just going to speak to uh if everyone wanted to share just, I guess, because I did identify as a freelancer at one point, and as you just heard, I was on those websites as well, looking for work. Um, I was curious on just everyone's transition to kind of, I guess, reposition themselves and get away from that. Yeah, I think my my story is a, a little bit unique in the fact that when I, when I started doing this business, I was working for a, uh, you know, for a, a print shop nine to five. Uh, and I started just marketing myself as myself. I set up like a business page with just my name and like graphic design and website design. Right. Uh, and my boss saw that and was like, no way you're not doing that. Like, uh, you know, he didn't want me, he didn't want me to be successful and leave the company, which is exactly what I did. Uh, so I, I wasn't going to stop doing it. So what I ended up having to do was create a company name that disassociated me mm. from the business. Uh, this way I could continue marketing it and he would be none the wiser. So Ogle Web Design was born and he had no idea, you know, if he, if he ran across it online, he would have no idea it was me. So I was kind of forced from the beginning to position myself as a company. Uh, nice. And I think I made a lot of mistakes in trying to, especially when I was extremely green at this, 
uh, positioning myself as we and us and as a big company when it was when it was just me and now I've done completely the 180 to it's a company name that everything on my website, well, not everything, but for the most part, I talk about I and me, mm -hmm. you know, a uh, singular, uh, and because I just try to be a little bit more open and honest about it, but that's, that's kind of how I got there from it. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I kind of touched, touched on the same, same. Um, like, like I started, I started calling, calling myself freelancer in the beginning because, because that's, that's what, what I was. was. So, so, you know, and then, uh, uh, and I was, I was on Reddit, Reddit or something similar, similar to it. it. And, and somebody, somebody made a post, post about how they stopped calling them, themselves, themselves a freelancer and, you know, what, uh, what, what that gained them. them. And, and I, you know, I took a hard look at it and I, I completely agreed with it. And uh, I think it was, it was right after I, um, I read, I read that, that post that, that I went in and changed all my messaging and I've never called myself a freelancer since. And, you know, as soon as, as I did, did man, the, uh, the, the, the way the clients interacted with me completely shifted. Wow. You know, it was, it was way less like, excuse me, of a, um, you know, you know we, we need this done, done here's, here's everything, this, this is how it's supposed to look, this is exactly what you're going to be doing, to a, this is what we want to accomplish, uh, what, what's, what's your, your opinion? opinion? Like, like how, how, how should, should we go about doing, doing this? Like, like they, they were really way more into trying to figure, figure out, like, like, I don't know, know like, like using, using, using me more as a, uh, as a partner rather than a, you know, button pusher for lack of right, a better, better word. So, so what was the, uh, what was the switch for you? What happened to make you change Nathan? Well, um, hmm. I'm trying to, well, there's, there was a lot that happened, but no, thank you all for answering that. Cause I had a similar experience as well, but I don't think it was as easy for me. I was freelancing for some, for some years already. And I just kept wondering how come I wasn't getting high value clients or really, as I like to categorize it, people were putting me in a certain box, right? And the box they put me in was Nathan will give you high quality and high value at a low price. So I was like, why are people putting me in that box? So I'm pretty good. Um, if I don't know how to do something, I'll learn how to do it. Um, I'm always careful with my time. I'm always careful in making sure somebody gets their money's worth and you know, going beyond expectations. Why are people still treating me low? I don't get it. And I just started thinking about and looking at how I was portraying myself, uh, finding other people online, seeing what they're doing as well. And basically I said, okay, how come I can't work with some of those big names but when I took a hard look at it, I'm like, oh, I'm not even communicating publicly all of the value that I'm bringing. And this title is feeding some of that. This title of freelancer is, I'm a freelance web designer. It's feeding into some of that because to be honest, whenever I do a project, I'm not just a freelance web designer. I, um, I'm looking at typography, right? I'm looking at graphic design. I'm looking at uh, some of the colors and choosing the proper colors and what pairs well and a little bit of color theory and i'm looking at um, all these many different things even building the website because some people equate web design to everything web design is different from web development mm -hmm. right and it's a whole other thing if you want to put web development into something dynamic like a content management system of sort that's a completely different thing but when i called it freelancer it just summed all of that together and it didn't communicate that I had expertise in all these areas, right? So for me, it was a deconstruction of what I was portraying and then a building back up under a proper title, under a proper brand and uh, you know, shifting all the words on my website and everything of that nature and just getting good at just describing what I do and not making it sound overly simple. Yes, it is simple to, in a sense, you want a website, we're gonna meet, do some strategy, get some feedback, do some research and I'll build it. Yes, so overall process might be straightforward, but it's by no means simple as, I'm a freelance web designer. So yeah, for me, it just took a little longer and that's even some of the reason why I started making content because I, the term freelancer just didn't capture everything that I knew. Right. And so a lot of me in the brand and community making content was around repositioning myself. So yeah, it just took a little a couple of years, but yeah, now it, it did shift how clients reacted to me. That's for sure. 
Well, I, I can definitely say when we when we saw you talk and give your your talk at WordCamp DFW and and you gave some stories of some people you had reached out to to, to work with and stuff like that. Uh, I didn't get the sense at all at this point. You know, that was my first introduction to you ever that you did uh, high quality work for cheap and and were a freelancer. You definitely aren't giving off that vibe anymore. So uh, for whatever that's worth, uh, you you fix those issues. But it's interesting. You know, this right now is a good time of the year where we're all kind of like looking at. Uh, where our business is at and where we want it to go. Um, you know, before we wrap this up and get out of here, I, I do want to, I want to see if you have any tips for people who are doing some of that reflecting right now. I know when we started talking before we started recording this call, you said you were kind of in that mode of, of reflecting yeah, and yeah. looking at your business. Uh, what are some tips you would have having gone through that yourself and realizing that you weren't presenting yourself the way you wanted to be presented? How can people kind of look at their business from the outside perspective. Is there anything that you learned during that process that would be useful for folks? Oh yeah, for sure. Good question, by the way. Uh, no, I would say uh, definitely you should have some type of goal or there should be some company or someone online that maybe you follow, get advice from, listen to on a podcast. Maybe you listen to something called the admin bar, maybe. Uh, what, whatever you might be. Uh, if somebody is having a certain level of success <laughs> in their business and you're aspiring to that, uh, find out why, you know, find out whether they be looking at their information and what they're doing and literally mimic whatever it is they're doing. I would even go as far as to say, cause I did this too. I would even go as far as to say, find companies that you like that are successful, give them a phone call. Um, and don't try to call like the main person or the CEO or they're too busy or they might be too busy. It depends, but you know, call too busy who, golfing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call anybody who works with them and just try to see if you can ask them questions about their business and how it works. Because I called people. Now, they weren't directly in Houston because I didn't want them to view me as competition. But um, I've called people and just said, how do you do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, you know, all that. I asked them tons of questions. I sent them ahead of time. Can I talk to you for 15 minutes and ask you five questions and just see what they say. And they'll give you some insight on maybe something you need to change. But also a good thing to do is find somebody, it can be a friend as well, but find somebody who doesn't know anything about really what you do and try to just explain to them what you do. If you have a good grasp on this, then they'll be able to get an idea. Oh, I have an idea what you do and ask them to repeat it back. Mm -hmm. If they're trying to repeat it back and it's like convoluted and it's not like clear and they say, okay, what do you do again? How do you help people again? And it's just not straightforward. Then you need to simplify it to a point to where you can clearly explain what it is you do and how it provides value, right? So I'm just saying that from the perspective of looking at your business and say, maybe you're convoluting things and how you're explaining it. And a client is coming to your website, like, I don't know what you do, right? So find someone who's just a little bit of clueless, right? And just see if you can explain to them what they do and they can repeat it back to you. That's something simple you can do as well. Yeah, no, Donald Miller, yeah, Donald Miller talks about like websites passing the grunt test. You know, he, he does all the content stuff. And, you know, if people can't look at your website in a few seconds and have some kind of general idea of what you do, that's probably a, probably not a good thing. So I really like that as a tip to to try to explain that to somebody who's, you know, a little bit clueless to our industry, which isn't hard to find, uh, and then get them to repeat it back to you or even have them look at your website for, you know, 20 seconds and then yeah. tell you, t tell you back what you do. I think that's pretty interesting. Well, man, I, I certainly enjoy this conversation. I'm glad to get you on the show. I want to give everybody the opportunity. I know everybody's going to be into this as well. Uh, why don't, why don't you give us a whole spiel of where people can find you, what they, uh, what they can look forward to checking out. Uh, I know you got tons of great content out there, so I want to give you the floor to tell us all about it. Yeah, thank you. But so you, <laughs> my main website where I'm putting out content is, uh, nathanalote.com. So it's my namesake, right? So Nathan, N-A-T-H-A-N-A-L-L-O-T-E-Y.com. You go to NathanLote.com. Uh, lots of free resources just for, you know, creatives, whether it be different guides, podcasts, episodes, uh, video as well. A lot of things I do have video. Uh, I'm on YouTube also. If you search my name, Nathan Lote, uh, on YouTube, you find some of the same podcast episodes in video form, but also some tutorials on specifically just how to do certain things, um, whether it be wireframing or designing or different things of that nature. So, you know, more of the how to 
is on YouTube as well. If you can't spell my name, because you heard, even though I spelt it and you're like, I can't find it. <laughs> we'll have guy. a link. Yeah. We'll have a link. It's good. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, if you're listening, you can't spell it. You can go to freelancejumpstart.tv and it'll get you to my website with the uh, proper podcast page. So either way, um, uh, my podcast is on iTunes, Spotify, wherever podcasts are sold. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, you can you search for me, you'll find me, and uh, I'm still I'm, I'm I'm my namesake on most social media platforms as well. So Instagram, Twitter, all that. Nice. Awesome. Well, uh, I definitely encourage everybody to go check that out. We'll make sure to leave some links. We'll link this specific podcast where where uh, you're talking about this freelancer term, so people can check that out as well. And I'll drop a couple other links in there so everybody can can check everything out. So I really appreciate you coming on with us today. Oh, thank you. No, thank you for having me. This is a great talk, and I'm glad. Uh, seems like we all had a similar experience in terms of getting away from the term, right? But uh, yeah. so yeah, I'm glad we're at least on that and want to, you know, talk about this subject just so people can know you can change that today. I like how Matt said that earlier. It was fairly simple. You can change that today. It doesn't have to be some long process. You know, you can make the change now. Yeah, it's true. And I'd like to see in the comments, like, you know, people that have gone through this already and, you know, maybe the ones that are thinking about making the leap, like, let's have a conversation about that down below. Yeah, yeah down below. I, you know, I'd be interested. I know there's several people in here who refer to themselves as freelancers. I would like to know if if these examples or this conversation made you rethink that at all, too, because I have a suspicion that it will. Um, all right. Well, Nathan, I certainly appreciate you joining us. Uh, you're in the group there. So if people have yeah, questions, yeah. I'm sure they can tag you and, uh, let's, uh, let's not be a stranger. We'll make sure to get you back on the show again. And, uh, here's to a, a really productive 2020 for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to finally be on the show. <laughs> awesome, man. All right, guys, as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share the content, subscribe to our podcast or YouTube channel and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes a little time and it greatly helps support the show. That is all for now. We will catch you all inside the group. Bye-bye.